So far, the primary collections that we've worked with are array and list. We've also worked a little bit with the range type. Turns out that all of these are what are referred to as sequences in Scala. They have elements that are kind of in an order, they have a numerical index, and that numerical index can be used to look them up. Those are not the only collections that are available. So there is a package called Scala.collection, and it has sub packages inside of it. And we want to look at a few of those and help you to understand some of the other collections so that we can potentially use them in our programming. So this is the a simplified version of the inheritance hierarchy for the Scala.collection package. At the very top, there is a type called traversable, which is basically a type that says you can walk through the elements of this. And it has a subtype called iterable. The iterable type, not only can you walk through it, it has the ability to give you an iterator. And we've already seen iterators with the files that we've worked with, the fact that they are things that wind up, they go through, but they are consumed as you use them. So anything that's iterable can give you an iterator. Then there are three primary subtypes of iterable. Once again, the one that we've worked with is this sequence type here. And sequences actually have two different subtypes. Index sequences give you the ability to efficiently grab a random element at an index. Arrays are index sequences. So what that means is that you can grab the element at index 10,000, or if you have a large enough collection, index a million, and it should still be fast. Whereas linear sequences, in order to grab the nth element, you have to do n work to, to get to it. The list is a linear sequence. You should not be indexing into a list. You shouldn't use the parentheses to get elements out of a list because that's a slow operation on a list. And it's not just lists. We'll see there are other subtypes of linear sequence. So this distinction between being indexed and linear is, is an important one. In addition to the sequence, there are two other primary subtypes, the set and the map. Now we're going to come back in some subsequent videos and actually talk about the details of set versus map. But for this video, we're just going to kind of give an overview of what all the collections kind of look like. This is the top level package, Scala.collection. Two of these sub packages under it are called immutable and mutable. So this is the inheritance hierarchy for Scala.collection.immutable. So everything that's here is stuff that you can't change once you create it. You can see that the list type is here. It turns out that range and numeric range are also immutable types. So those appear on this. As you see, the list is a subtype of linear sequence. The ranges are subtypes of index sequence. And there are others in here. We've actually seen vector once or twice when we did a for loop over a range and we put on a yield. It had a tendency to give us back a vector. So a vector is an immutable indexed sequence. You can jump to things uh, efficiently. One of the other things about the immutable collections is they typically allow you to add things efficiently. So you can, on the list, for example, you can prepend and that's a very efficient operation. In the vector, you can add things to a vector and it does not have to rebuild the entire collection. It can just modify a few things. So the, and once again, it's immutable. The original vector stays in place. It builds a few new pieces and gives you back a, a vector that has the new elements in it. But most of the memory, for example, is shared on that. Under set and map, there are now multiple different subtypes. Uh, we will actually, during the course of, of kind of the semester's worth of material here, we will see how you implement hash sets and tree sets and even list sets, as well as the hash map, the list map, and the tree map. They're all just way this they're all different ways of implementing these concepts called map and set. And once again, we'll come back to what exactly a map and a set are in a little later in this video playlist. So this is the immutable package. The Scala collection mutable package has an inheritance hierarchy that looks like this. Once again, traversable and iterable. In addition to the set, the sequence, and the map, we've added a type called priority queue, which is dealt with in a, another playlist, and a type called stack, which we will actually see stacks in a playlist coming up very soon. Our sets have hash sets, uh, again, 
they don't bother having the the tree sets for the mutable version because there are various reasons when we get to the point where we talk about what a tree set is and what a hash set is or a hash map and a tree map hopefully you'll start to understand why they made choices for for doing some of these things under sequence in addition to having linear sequences and index sequences we also have something called an array stack and a buffer and so we'll talk in a in a video coming up shortly about the different types of buffers but you can also see that there are things for example the operations on an array so you'll note that array is nowhere in here not array proper but this array ops provides is array gets converted to that and it provides some of the additional operations like map and filter um, it is an index sequence so you can jump to elements quickly they also provide some linked lists in the linear sequence uh, once again, there's a future playlist where we'll talk about exactly what linked lists are and what that means. So this hopefully provides something of an overview. You can see there are lots of different classes in here. And the big question is, how do you choose between these? And so a big part of trying to teach you how about data structures and not just teach you about data structures, but show you how to implement data structures is to give you the knowledge so that you can efficiently pick between these different types. Uh, how should you pick whether you should use a mutable hash set or an immutable tree set? Okay, what would be the reasons behind that? The more you know about how these things are implemented and what goes into them, the more informed decisions you can make and the better code that you're going to write.